Inertia is a great enemy to motivation. If you're asking people to change, change products or change ideas, they need a reason. If you're asking them to take an action, whether to make a purchase or embrace a belief, they need a reason. Focusing on a problem gives them the motivation to act. If the advertiser can find or create a problem, they can position the product or idea as the solution. We've seen a version of this ad earlier. The problem noted by the ad is that there are 3 billion women who don't look like supermodels and only 8 who do. That's a clear problem. The solution is to visit the body shop. A successful ad should meet a need. Got a little hammered at the party? You need Alka-Seltzer to solve your problem. The man in this ad has a clear need. The solution is Belvedere Vodka. The woman in this ad also has a need. The need to avoid rape. Belvedere Vodka is not the solution. This ad was eventually pulled due to consumer outrage. Well, if you don't have a need, create one. We've already talked about the multi-billion dollar bottled water industry. This ad from the New York City Water Department tries to remind people of the benefits of tap water. Now, there are four basic kinds of needs and we'll discuss each one. There's physical need, safety need, belongingness and love, and self-esteem. And yes, these are closely related to the Module 5 discussion on how consumers make choices. What did people used to do to relax? They took drugs. This Miles Nervine ad is from the 1940s. These days, nearly all of us feel tense and nervous once in a while. So try Miles Nervine to help you feel relaxed. Here's another solution to a physical need with a jingle written in 1941. If your snuff's too strong, it's wrong, get too bruised. You'll feel much better all day long with two bruised snuff. Some examples of physical needs are food, drink, shelter, and sex. And the more powerful the need, the more powerful the motivation to consume. Sex is considered a primal physical need, which is why so many advertisements use sex. The best ads combine multiple needs, like these ads for Arby's and Budweiser. Love, however, isn't as strong a motivator. and We'll talk more about love in a minute. This ad, which you've seen before, links the need for safety and sex. This ad for a gun range also links safety with a humorous sexual image. The next need is belongingness and love. Everyone wants to belong. Everyone wants to love and be loved. Now this ad should remind you of the Hennessy ad we viewed earlier in the course. It combines a physical need with the emotional need to belong. And if you want your family to love you, just serve them spam. Another powerful motivator is self-esteem. It's a complex motivation, since it can be applied both positively and negatively. Ads promoting positive self-esteem make you feel good about yourself and about the product. Ads promoting negative self-esteem make you feel bad about yourself until you buy the product. Then the product makes you feel good. This is sometimes called product as hero, and we'll talk about that later on. These two ads promote positive self-esteem. The ad on the left with the smiling young boy promotes how good you feel when you choose organic food. The ad on the right promotes how good you feel in Van Heusen shirts. The advertiser wasn't concerned about the self-esteem of the wife. These ads are based on a negative self-esteem. If you don't want your husband to beat you, buy this coffee. Axe commercials are built around a simple premise. You're a loser. And you won't get the girl without our help. 
Few are as obvious as this axe ad from Mexico. As we talked about with the great Satan, critics are especially concerned about advertising's power to create problems in the mind of the consumer. In the next part of Module 6, we'll take a look at the methods used to persuade you to buy products. First, we'll start with facts. Then we'll move on to emotions.